Welcome to another round of Really OK Golf and a rematch with myself at Plantation Golf Club in Frisco, Texas. I've played this course a lot, but never as poorly as last time. So I wanted to come back right away to see if I could redeem myself a bit on this fun course that I really enjoy. We just had a big rainstorm making today cart path only. Looks like I'll be getting in some extra steps. I don't get off to a great start as I pull my tee shot over the trees and into a yard. At least I hit it well, for whatever that's worth. My second attempt is much better and we are officially on our way. At this point the goal is double bogey or less. My approach shot helps the cause by finding the green and I have an outside chance to drop only one shot. Last time I played here I had a hard time getting the ball all the way to the hole. Today I would find a different way to miss putts, but for now I keep up with the old trends and leave this a couple feet short. I clean up the second ball par, aka double bogey, and head to number two. I start my drive on the perfect line, but the ball decides to take a detour to the right. It keeps doing that, but at least it stayed close to the cart path. I'm still a long way out, but it's far enough from the trees that I have a shot. This five wood actually has the exact shape that I want, just a bit high, and the wind holds it a bit short of the green. Around 30 yards is usually a good distance for my 64 degree wedge, but this time I don't execute my shot very well. Oh, that was pretty disappointing. Didn't hit it nearly hard enough. The putt from off the green comes up a yardstick short, and I sink the knee knocker for a bogey, which honestly isn't too bad on this hole. Last time I played number three, the wind was at my back, and my drive went over 300 yards. Today it's into the wind, and I have a full pitching wedge into the green. It's funny how some of my best contact comes when I pull it left, and this is no exception, as I end up wide of the green. My chip isn't quite as close as I'd like, but there's not much to this putt, and I put a good stroke on it. And thus begins a new trend on the greens. Close, but not quite. I start out the par 5 fourth about as well as possible with a striped 3-wood, but now I'm in a bit of a pickle. I could go for the green with a long iron or hybrid, but that means covering two hazard areas and avoiding trouble on both sides. Or I could lay up with a wedge and have another wedge shot in. I opt for the safer play, and so far so good. Then my carefully laid plans crumble as I launch my approach over the green and into the water on the other side. I take a drop and still have a chance to save bogey after an okay chip back down the hill. Then I realize I forgot to grab my putter. Since I already have a group on my heels, I opt to putt with my wedge. It almost works, and I tap in for double. Maybe I should have gone the aggressive route instead of playing it safe. The par 3 fifth is made much more accessible today by a helping wind. I hit 5 wood last time, and this is just a 7 iron. I hit it off the toe, so I'm a bit short, but that's the right miss with this hole location, even though I power my chip past the hole. This putt looks really straight, so I take dead aim with a firm stroke and notch a rare par on this tricky hole. Number six is a short par four, but the green is on a peninsula, so you have to lay up short of the water. Sometimes it's a mid iron, but today I'm going with my three hybrid. I pull it a bit, hopefully not too far. That's gonna be a long walk to see if it stayed short of the water. Which it is, and it's just a short wedge into the green. Last time I overshot the green and ended up making a mess of the hole. This time I err on the short side, but I'm dry, and that's what matters. It's a back flag, and my chip ends up a few feet short, but my par putt sneaks in the side door, and it's a four-stroke improvement from a week ago. Not bad. Last time I played hole seven with a five wood into the wind. Today it's 30 yards shorter, and the wind's at my back. I pull this eight iron a bit, but it's right on the edge of the green, and I have a good chance for an up and down. I chip it up nice and close with my 64 degree wedge, and it's an easy tap in for a third straight par. When you tend to push the ball right, it's a bit risky to use to the driver on this par 5 dogleg left. But with a hurting wind, I give it a rip, and luckily I hit it poorly enough that it stays just short of the real trouble. I don't love hitting off dirt lies like this, but I make good contact, and it's a quality layup. For once, the ball goes exactly where I'm aiming. This is a great distance for my 64 degree but I don't feel comfortable with this spotty lie. In retrospect, I probably should have used a different club to punch it up there. Instead, I hit it fat and get to try again from closer up. My fourth shot is on a good line, but shorter than I'd like. Left me with some work to do. The par putt is oh so close, but it just slips out and I settle for my first square in a little while. The front nine closes out with a shorter par four, 
My whole goal here is to give myself a good angle into the green, and this 3 hybrid does just that. Everything was perfect about that tee shot, except it ended up in a bit of a divot. Kind of annoying, but I've actually had good success out of divots, and this lob wedge is tracking nicely. Boy, that was good. It's by far my closest approach of the day. My birdie putt runs out of gas though, and I make the turn with a tap in par. What a difference a week can make. I played the front nine a whopping eight strokes better than my last time here. The main difference was doing better at keeping the ball in play and having higher quality misses. I still feel like I left a few strokes out there, but that's golf, especially when you're just really okay. I try to put thoughts about scores out of my mind as I step up to the demanding par 5 tent. I get a bit under this one and lose it mid-flight, but I'm safely over the water and in good shape. Now, I actually didn't press record for my second shot, so here's the second shot from last week. This is a little further left than today's, but otherwise it's the same distance, same club, same result. For the second time in three holes, I don't do a great job with my short wedge shot. So I'm trying to get up and down from just off the green now. Not my best effort, but my par save is tracking, tracking, then dives left and goes for a ride. So it's a bogey. I think I've had like four lip outs. Man. Actually, just three, but it's still early. Number 11 has water right in front of the green. So I step up and stripe a three wood down the left side of the fairway. The ball catches a small bank next to those trees and funnels nicely up the fairway. It's actually way up there and I have less than normal into the green. My 64 degree makes up for all its foibles today and I have a good look at birdie. Got a couple friends here guarding the green. It's a bit long, but it looks totally straight. So I take dead aim and it's my first birdie in quite a while. I'm very pleased. That was nice. It's maybe a bit naive, but I really want to try for a draw on this left-leaning par 4. Well, it's the thought that counts. That wasn't even close. You can see the flag right through the V in that tree. But my play is most definitely to the left of the tree and try to fade it up toward the green. It's actually not a bad effort. I'm rather pleased with this chip. And also that I didn't accidentally step on that fire ant hill. That would have been bad. However, I'm not very pleased that I leave this par putt half a roll short in the jaws, but it's a bogey. The par 3 13th is short, but visually challenging with that pond between you and the green. So it's not surprising that I pull this pitching wedge a bit. There's a lot of slope on this green from top to bottom, which you can see with how the chip rolls out. Not my best work, but I have a shot at saving par. It's really tough to match speed and line when there's this much break though, and I have to settle for a second straight tap in bogey. Number 14 is long and challenging. The key is just to keep it in play, but this tee shot is a bit too far right and it hits the cart path, which usually spells trouble. I hit a provisional just in case, and it's in a good spot. It turns out my first ball is in a yard, so I'm playing my fourth shot here from the fairway. I hit this six iron about as well as I can, and it actually goes a bit long. Most holes on this course really punish you for going over the green. Luckily this one isn't too bad and it's a simple chip with my 64 degree. My speed is good, just a little wide right, and I nail the three footer for my second, second ball par of the day. Hole 15 tests whether you really know your club distances. I expect to hit my six iron about 170, which would give me a wedge in. Instead I only get about 145 yards out of it thanks to a weak swing and a hurting wind. This leaves me with a 7 iron, which goes about the same distance as my tee shot. It's quite a bit right, but it's on the green, so no complaints here. I take my time with this long semi-downhill putt, and it's my highlight reel lag putt of the day. Crazy enough, that's my first par on the back nine. Man, this tee box on 16 is as far back as you can go. Last time I lost the ball right. Today I pull it left into the big bailout area. It's okay, but it's a tough angle for me to play from. For the second time, my three hybrid shot was not recorded. But this time you didn't miss much because I hit it weakly into those trees up there, which just knocked the ball down, leaving me in a pretty tough spot. This lie is awful, but I still try to do too much with this. Instead of just punching it into the fairway, I try to really advance it up there. But I wasn't even lined upright, and it's a worm burner that still has me in trouble. This shot requires a lot of touch to punch it up and hold the green. I give it too much gas, and the ball rolls through to the back fringe. 
Man, that's so hard. I gotta admit, I'm a bit rattled at this point, and this long putt from off the green reflects that. Not even close. This 18-footer burns the edge, and after taking the adventurous route on this hole, I drop the 5-footer for a double. Last week, I hit a ball into the water and got a double on this short par 3. This time I put a good swing on it with my 9-iron, and I'm right in the middle of the green. Somehow, I missed that this putt is a bit downhill, and I absolutely crush it past the hole. But the 6-foot comebacker goes in, and I get away with a par. Looking to close out the round well, I make the strategic choice to go with my 3-wood instead of driver. But the tee box is a bit uneven, and I hit the ground first, leading to one heck of a shank. Or maybe it was the bird that distracted me. Either way, I step up for my third shot. That's what I was trying to do the first time. I still have an outside chance at limiting the damage to bogey, so I really focus and put a good swing on this 7-iron. A little too good, as it turns out. The ball goes further left than is good for it, and scoots right over the green. It's a lengthy pitch shot. It's actually pretty well played, just needed a bit more juice. The 7-footer moseys on by, and I clean up for a closing triple. Certainly not how I wanted to end the day, but at least I stayed in the 80s and beat last week's score by 9 strokes. As always, I left a few strokes out there, but that's what you do when you're just okay at golf. The lesson for today is, once again, keep the ball in play. Four penalty strokes cost me at least seven shots. Clean those up and breaking 80 is within reach. Spoiler alert, that's exactly what happens in the next video. So please like and subscribe so you can get notified about more really okay golf. Until next time.